Welcome to the Sports Show, Mike Max, Patrick Royce, Lou Nanny, and Sid Hartman. Sidney, how are you? I'm surviving. Yeah, so <laughs> where, where do you, you had food poisoning the other day, huh? I am very sick. You okay, though? Sheldon Burns saved my life, is what he did. I, I'd have choked to death otherwise. Saved my life in the Target Center. He was down there for the draft. My daughter drove me down there, and uh, I was in bad shape. Did you give it to Heimlich? Hmm? Give did you have to give it to Heimlich maneuver? If you're choking? I had a priest there to give me the final <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we can start a lot of number of different places. You want to start with NHL free agency. Pardon me? <laughs> NHL free agency today. The Parisi and Suter haven't signed. We were just having a spirited debate about whether or not the Wild would be a good place for them. Your thoughts? If he wants to make a lot of money, it goes to the Wild. But he's got all the money in the world, so what does he need money for? He doesn't have all the money in the world yet. But Pretty he's going close. to have this contract. How much more can he spend? I mean, what's he making now? Well, he made $6 million this year, but he's going to make a lot more than that. With the new contract, he's going to make over $100 going to make it with anybody. Maybe not quite as much with the Wild. But no, he'll make more with the Wild. More with the Wild. The question is, can he win? Yeah. And that's one of the things that's really concerning me right now is he's probably looking at Pittsburgh saying, maybe I should go there. He's played with Crosby. They just signed Crosby for $104 million. They got Malkin there, and they got Neal there. But the thing is, How when come you they look got at all the money? Well, because they, they got rid of uh, Jordan Stahl. And they got rid of a, a couple of defensemen before that in the trade. And right now, that could be the problem. Because when you give that much to Parisi, now what's going to happen to the defense? You've got Latang, but other than that, your, your defense quality is not going to be as good. And Fleury didn't play very good in the playoffs. And if he plays it like that again, it doesn't mean they can win again, especially when we're not so sure that, that Crosby can play a full season. Yeah. Patrick, the interesting phenomenon that happens with salary caps, though, is... Uh, everybody, everybody thinks about you having to be tight, but actually you have to spend to the cap too. And if you do it right, the the best free agent available can get overpaid. Yeah, and I think Louis finally explained to me why uh, they can be paying these guys these contracts and with the salary cap when we don't even know if there's going to be a season or an You're agreement. Right. It's because they'll mm -hmm. just come and get 15% of the player's money after this is all over, right? Well, no, not, they don't have to worry that because the revenues are up. They don't even have to come and get the money. What's going to happen here, Patrick, is whoever gets Parisi and Suter, mm -hmm. they will give him a big signing bonus before oh, before, the before, the, before even a contract which, signs. Which a lot of people think <laughs> is a big part of this, yeah. right? If they're, you can get the gonna, guaranteed money before gonna the lockout. He's going to make $24 million guaranteed over two years. No matter where he goes, I'm, I'm pretty certain of that. He'll make about 20, so will Suter. So they get 24, 12 million this year in July and 12 million next year in July. So whether there's a lockout or not, he'll, Doesn't matter. he'll yeah. have it in the bank. Okay. He gets paid regardless? Well, that's yes. what you would negotiate at this point. Yes. You Let me leverage. ask you this. Is all that man guaranteed? Yes, it's all guaranteed. What just, do you like baseball? Uh, just like baseball? Just like baseball, basketball. Hockey's always been guaranteed. I think even before those guys. But the problem is now... You got see you got a guy that Crosby signed for 104 million. Once you've had those concussions, you can't insure Crosby anymore. He can't be insured. So if Crosby goes out in the first month and never plays again, he's got a 10-year contract for 104 million. Pittsburgh's got to pay that, and it's guaranteed. And if you're the a general manager, would you do that? I wouldn't have done 104 million. I would have a tough time, even if it's not my money. I have a tough time. Just saying, I'm going to guarantee 104 million. Said the NFL is the only league that can steal money from oh, the boy. players. They can yeah. give them a contract and then steal it back if they don't like it. But you know, Pat, we built this well, up can a they lot. Steal it back. Well, because NFL. Of the NFL by cutting them by cutting NF them. No, the NFL. I yeah. said. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Doesn't have to guarantee. They're the only league that doesn't guarantee the contract. Louis will disagree with this probably, but. Uh, we built this up so much with Suter and Parisi. If the Wild don't get them, you're going to feel like, oh, this is a really bad hockey team. Uh, here's the thing. I think that uh, Suter would be a nice consolation prize, but I think the guy that Parisi's the one on everybody's mind, right? Yeah, I and mean, he's, he's excited. That, he's, he's got, got charisma. He's got the sex he's, appeal. His daddy played yeah. here, and he played the WCHA for the arch rivals. He's the one that's got the appeal. Because Suter, if you don't get Suter, if you could get Carl, who Philadelphia is, uh, hasn't signed, which they're opening cap space for Parisi too. So I, I really believe it's going to be between Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and the Wild. It could be somebody else, but those three teams, uh, they've cut the list down, and those three teams, I believe, are still in it. Carl, is that the Denver kid? Yes. 
The WCHA sent some pretty good players. Yeah, they have. Ago, they? Now, Wisconsin had the kids yeah. sign Schultz with Schultz. Edmonton. Yep. And, I mean, there are a lot of them out there right now. Well, you know, they had 225 college players play uh, some games in the National Hockey League this year. Too bad they're... Uh, too bad the idiots are breaking up that league. They yeah, sure are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Paul Holmgren uh, said, "Your year, long years at." Uh, yeah, he's done well. Best one was that Eddie Snyder, I know pretty well. Yeah. Fired his son, yeah, because he didn't <laughs> like Bobby Clark. Yeah, and then he hired Holmgren. He's been there for ten years at least, hasn't he? Well, he, Homer's been. He was even there before that. When Homer was through playing, he was Bobby Clark's assistant. So. He's been there probably 15, even 16, pretty 17 smart years. pretty hockey guy? He's done a real good job. Holmgren's done an excellent job there. They should he, be He great. made the two biggest trades last year, and, and it took a lot of uh, chutzpah to do it, and he did it. He should, they should be grateful to him. He had to fight 50 fights a year that yeah, Lindsay yeah. started. <laughs> and Clark. <laughs> and Clark. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. should be good. You, you, but you talk about breaking up the WCHA. You're the one that advocated for Big Ten hockey Absolutely. for a long time. And what was your theory behind that? It would be great. They're going to get so much money. They already got a record contract for hockey in the Big Ten network. And that's what they wanted. Yeah. That's Plus, what they got. Now that they can move you can't sell North Dakota. You can't sell St. Claude. But you can sell the Big Ten. Oh, you can sell North Dakota. You can, that's one thing they're going to miss. Nationally. But uh, nationally you can. North Dakota's a big name, a real big name. But now you got Penn State coming in. If they can only convince other teams like Illinois to have a uh, team. They will. And, and I think Nebraska, because Lincoln, Nebraska, yeah. is a very successful junior team. Yep. And if the university ever comes in and you got Nebraska, Omaha, and Nebraska, you know, they, they'd have uh, a rivalry amongst rival themselves, non-conference. Yeah. And do you know, and you come into the Big Ten. you know, before the Big War, Illinois had a hockey program yeah, right. that was fairly successful. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. And, and Mary, she was one of the coaches. At Did Illinois? Coach him for a yes, while? sir. Is that right? I yes, sir. That's where he met his first wife. <laughs> I don't know if he coached there, but it, I know Illinois was in the league there. We'll go with it. Yeah. Take a break, come back, stay with us on the sports show. There it is, J.D. Hoyt's locally owned, nationally known, pretty good pork chop and a whole lot of good red meat and pretty good salads, too. Favorite of all of ours. Patrick, you semi-frequent there. Oh, yes, I do. No, uh, no place better. Yeah, Lots sure. of... Uh, and the Buddy Bowl. Don't forget the and Buddy don't Bowl. Don't forget the Buddy Bowl. <laughs> Twins, they went three out of four from Kansas City. You got an extra bounce in your step. Well, they're hard to figure them out, but the Mauer's on fire. Uh, we checked some figures. He, he's up there where he was when he won MVP and betting champion. And he's leading the league in uh, some respects. And uh, Loriano, all of a sudden, Pitching pretty good. I look for Loriana to go to the Yankees in the next 72 hours or so. Well, he just certainly didn't in increase their chances of trading him today. He was the same old messed up, falling off the mound, Loriano today. But, you know, he's had, what, five out of six decent starts. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think they can move him, and they certainly will uh, trade him. But, uh, you know what? In baseball, is the old saying is it's not who you play, but when you play yeah. them. But when you look at, the, they were 15 and 30. Playing the east. Look at who they played. Playing they the played east, the east. Texas they played and the Texas. Angels. They played the Angels a bunch of times, right? Since then, they're I think 17 and 15 yeah. since yeah. they started playing teams Kansas like City, them, and Detroit, you know? and Cleveland. So it's it's like any sport. It's who you play. And they, Absolutely. They weren't good enough early because they were playing teams that were better than them. Yeah. Got to get in the right division. <laughs> and they're, 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 the right they're division. in the right division. It's just that's right. you got to play the East yeah. at some point yeah. in time, and they're not very good against the East. Like especially with Detroit isn't playing the way people are playing. Like Madeline, how does a team completely go down I like don't that? Know. That used to be my favorite team, too. It makes me sick. <laughs> I used to go to Detroit from when I was six years old to 20. By the time I was nine, I was going alone on the bus to Is watch the, the Tigers. doesn't what make you, you as sick as it makes Illich yeah, spend the right. money yeah. spent for that team. A year ago, they were talking before the like, year ago the season start. That might be the best division. Central division, a lot of people were talking. Yeah, it's not. But it didn't turn out that way. And uh, I don't know how, how they can get better. I mean, uh, the only way they can get better, he wrote a column today saying the only way they can get better is uh, get a couple of pitchers. Uh, but where are the pitchers going to be? There's not that many pitchers in the free agent next year. They should have signed Edwin Jackson in this offseason, but they didn't do it. That would have been one. Well, Josh Willingham did not go to the All-Star game. Joe Maurer does. You mentioned statistics. Hard to argue that. I thought Willingham might end up going, though. 
That ain't. Outfielders. Competition's too tough. Yeah. They're going to take, you know, you got Mike Trout and Trumbo from the Angels and you know, Gardy too many best, then huh? tried, Gardy did his best to try to get Willingham a spot, it seemed like. Yeah, but, you know, it's outfielders and they're, you know, their numbers are too big and, uh, you know, catchers is a different thing, although a lot of people raising hell because A.J. didn't make it. Yep. AJ's having, runs, his, right? AJ's having his best year yep. and he's a guy who plays, you know, yep. all the time. He should, probably should have made yep. it. Louis, what's the All-Star game do for leagues? Well, I think, you know, it gives the commercial uh, appeal that they need and you get a lot of corporate sponsorship and the corporate people, you get to take them out there and, and entertain them and it really solidifies the relationship you have with them. Sydney? Talk about uh, the All-Star game. 1972 when the All-Star game was played here. Ohio State was playing Minnesota. I didn't go to the All-Star game. Talk about the NHL All-Star game. NHL All-Star game. Huh? The, the night of the brawl, and we lost Corky Taylor this last week is yes. what you're leading into. I didn't think that anything was going to happen, but I knew that Taylor hated Musselman. Musselman hated him. Taylor, because Knight would tell me all the now, time. Now, you got to back up. You're not talking about Corky Taylor now. You're talking about Fred Taylor, the coach at Ohio State yeah. at the time. Yeah. Corky Taylor got in the fight with Ohio State, but Musselman liked Corky Taylor. That was his player. Yeah. Okay. But Musselman and Taylor just hated him. And as a result, Knight hated him. He was always telling me all the stories about him. Once it happened, I never thought it'd be that bad, but I thought that something, brawl? something might happen. I can say one thing, and... Uh, well, they may get into a brawl. Corky Teeter was a nice fellow, though. He's a good guy, and, I, you know, he stayed around here. He had to he had to live his whole life with that. I yeah. mean, you Google Corky Taylor, and the first 15 things you see are about yeah. the fight with yeah. Ohio State. But he, uh, you know, family man, yep. lived a good life, and... Uh, Kent Youngblood, our paper, had great. a great story that they reconciled mm -hmm. nine years ago. Great uh, article. Luke Whitty came out yeah. and spent two days with Corky at Plymouth and in, in his home in Plymouth and Clyde Turner, and there was a lot of hugs, and and uh, they, they stayed in contact and stayed friends. I talked to Luke Whitty a couple the next day, and he repeated what he told Youngblood, that he's... You know, they considered Corky a friend. So yep. it's a great story of reconciliation. The next day of the riot? That. Yeah, I Oop. read that. Next day of the riot, he told you that? No, no, no. Recently he talked to him. Oh, Trump. recently? Yeah, no, if not I'd the had day. that story, not after, the day I don't think he loved him the day after the riot no, when he was getting out of the hospital. Yeah, but you know that they said <laughs> Woody, Woody actually elbowed uh, Nicks or one of the. Supposedly, supposedly at halftime. Half yeah. And that would upset the Gophers. That's what started it. That's what yeah. really started it. Yeah, it's interesting. To, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to justify Minnesota's behavior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough. You weren't there. You were talking. Yeah, I know, but I gotta give <laughs> I gotta give a little support to the Gophers. <laughs> yeah. Were you at the Gopher game or the hockey? Game? Gopher game. Why? Why was it the hockey game? Was the All Star game? Yes, I thought it was to me. It was more important. Okay. Right. Let me say one thing about the All Star games. You asked about the yeah. the the importance of the league. The great, the Major League All Star game is still by far the best All Star game, yeah. and you know why? Because people could complain about it. Yeah. People could complain who made the team. I mean, it's the, go on the social media today, everybody's up in arms about this guy and that guy. When's the last time you heard someone complain about somebody not making the Pro Bowl? Yeah. Plus, you know? when you play baseball, you have to play it at the same level every same day. Same game. You can't, yeah. you can't, yeah, it's the same game you see all year. Take a break, come back, stay with us. Is that right? There here? it is. Stop on by. Visit there. I picked up an A7 a couple years ago and a couple weeks ago and got another SUV there. Bruce Boney and the whole group out there committed to excellence and they're really Minnesota-like. Check out the A7 for a nice drive. You know, you were talking about ownership groups and whatnot. Uh, I don't know how this strikes, but a lot of people thought Phil Falcone was next in line to own the Wild. Now it looks like he's in all kinds of trouble. What do you know? You know, 30% of them. But in, in the, and everybody thought he would step into the, the major role. Yeah, the rumors are he'd know a lot better than I do that they each had options of buying each other out. If they would, do you think you the pull National League will force him out of uh, hockey? Well, they're not going to force him out until uh, he, he's been, he might get charged by the SEC and you don't know what's going to happen yet. So the uh, company that he's got has got some problems and this light squared went into bankruptcy and it uh, was a big part of his, his hedge fund. His hedge fund at one time was $26 billion. Now it's gone a, way, a long way down, and there's some practices that the SEC is looking at, so you, you just don't know what's going to happen yet. I can't see Leopold getting out, even if there was no. another option. He loves it. Seems like he loves it, it but... It means too much to him, doesn't it? I no, mean, it's what, his life. Well, I actually met with uh, Falcone before he bought into the wild, 
and it was at the All-Star Game in Atlanta, and he sent two guys to uh, come and get me and ask if I'd talk to him. I didn't know he wanted to get involved in the team, and he said, when I met him, I had I'd never met him before, and he just told me he wanted to buy an NHL team, and I says, well, you're not going to get the Wild because you've already got a deal in place with Leopold. It hasn't been finalized, but he's getting a team. And he said, well, I'd like to get another team. I said, it might be smarter just to buy but into the Wild and have the first option in case he ever sells, and that's what he did. And I said, at the same time, it gives you an opportunity to look around the National League and see if there are any other possibilities that you might want to get into, knowing what's going on with that team, which you won't know from the outside. Louis, who owns the other 19%? Nagley still? No, no, he just he got a very small, small part. part. There's a bunch of uh, minorities. Yeah. The, like, the guys that were with Leopold's him before. Leopold's got 51 and Falcone's got 30. There's, uh, you know, uh, Vance opperman has been in, Hubbard's yeah, okay. been in, Mike Riley's been in, uh, Nagley's in. So they've got a number of guys. Nassif is in. They've, they've got a few people, but uh, they've got really good minority owners that, that stayed with the, the group. told some friend of mine that uh, he had to put in money about two, three years in a row. Is that true? Put in at the end. Oh, you do it in all teams. You do it like in the Timberwolves. They've had to put in money. Well, if you, you want to keep the thing. your shares. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You, Glenn's either, picked up the you have a cash call. It. Right. What, what did you think of uh, the Timberwolves draft or not draft if they got Buddinger instead? I don't know I had a long talk with Kevin McHale today, and uh, he really he really liked this kid. Buttinger. But, th but they thought they could get Howard. Yeah, Dwight Howard they're making the play for. Uh, yeah, they thought they could make a deal for two or three draft choices with Howard, and that's actually why that's the one guy they would take here that was available for the uh, first draft choice. So he made that deal. He it wasn't he wanted to get rid of the guy. Uh, that's the reason he made the deal. It was kind of funny, though, because uh, people were trying to figure out how the deal went down, and, and David Kahn kind of let it slip. He said he mentioned to the guy from Houston, uh, the general manager, that they really like Buttinger, and then he said Adelman basically came in my office a week later and said, I've got this thing worked out. So if there's any question as to who's making the decisions <laughs> in the basketball operation, I think it's Adelman back. Well, the, the fact that well, just keep hearing the Pogasol rumors, yeah, it's got to yeah. be Adelman driven. Right, yeah, with that kind of money in that age. Why are they enamored with him? Or maybe they're not, and we're just here. Adelman's 66 Must years be. old. He yeah. don't want to lose That's it anymore. Right. That's yeah. why. What were you going to say, Lloyd? Well, we're talking about you want to win, you want to win now. Adelman's, like he said, at 66, you don't know how much longer he wants to coach, so he wants to win now. He's not concerned about the future. Gasol's older, makes a lot of money. He's a short-term fix if bet. he comes in. You can bet he has... Really, something to say about every trade. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you would never made that. That's right. Deal to come here. This guy drafted Flynn, turned out to be a clean flop. Ford, complete flop. Williams, at this point, certainly not worth it. Wesley Second Johnson. Second guy. Johnson. In the Wesley Johnson was number four overall. Who? Wesley, Wesley Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. So. So he hasn't done a very good Ruby job. Ruby is the only one. Take a break. Come back. Stay with us. I Good play, dead. There it is. Bar Abilene for happy hour weekdays, 4 to 7. Saturday, Sunday is 2 to 7. Happy hour specials include two for one drinks and $2 off any food item. Wayne Kostrowski and the whole gang got it. They do it right all the time there. Visit barabilene.com or find them on Facebook. S Sydney, those Miller uniforms, they bring back some memories for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember Mike Kelly was a president of the club and he'd get drunk and he had a couple of dogs. He was out in right field with the dogs and the dogs would chase the outfield. I got it. Babe Barna got bit one time. <laughs> had to stop the game. You take him off the field. So is the play here, Patrick, I, I've had about enough of the old throwback uniforms over the years, but is the play they auction them off game worn to some I, charity? I or what, what, what's this the This one I didn't mind as much, I guess, because it's something that I, you know, I remember the Millers from the late 50s, but... Uh, you know, I am sick of them too. God yeah. Almighty! You know, they they look awful and. Uh, yeah, it's another retro game when you mm -hmm. turn on the TV. Yeah. That's why I really like the old established six teams. They don't change their they uniforms never in the them. NHL. They won't change them. <laughs> they don't care. They got them. They're, and right. everybody says they're the best. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the North Star said it went heck of a logo too, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That still sells really well, you it know, does. in retro. Yeah, it's I was talking around Leap Black, yeah. Gold Country, and they carry that, and they stock it, and it's really big. What were you going to say, Sid? We had some great ball players on that club, and the best one was you play a 10 o'clock game on Memorial Day, Back July 4th, now, yeah. and Labor Day, a 10 o'clock in the morning game at uh, one place, and then 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 
best one was that that Kirby Farrell was a real character, came in there with the Indianapolis team. They had Rocky Colavito, they had Herb Score, they had a bunch of guys that won a couple pennants with Cleveland. And I was in Cleveland for the All-Star game and I sit with Hank Greenberg and he comes in, he's looking for more players. <laughs> Here's the worst. Here's the worst throwback ever. The Tampa Bay Rays yesterday had a throwback to 1979 when they didn't exist. <laughs> they designed. They designed, they designed it. If they would have had a team, if they would have had a team, this is what the, this that, we would have looked like. That's what it was looked yeah. like. You Anything to sell a jersey. <laughs> You tell me what that does. Does that draw fans? That's what, we're, that's what I was asking. I don't think Patrick. it draws fans. It, mm -hmm. You know, it's a curiosity item. It's a merchandise Something to sale. talk about. Something to sell. It's Cost your money for doing yeah. nothing. 162 yeah. games, you got to come up with something, yeah. don't you? Yeah. yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. Um, Patrick, you said, though, you're talking about the Millers. Uh, I heard you the other day. Yastrzemski came through here. Yeah, I don't Ted know Williams the all-time team, Mays, but I know huh? the all-time outfield, Mays, Williams, and Yastrzemski. Who do you remember <laughs> seeing in that group? I saw Mays. I came up here for an exhibition game when Mays played here. They came back to play the Millers. Must have been the last year they were the yeah. Millers Farm Club. He played a couple innings and, you know, three. Had the a old couple Met of Stadium then, or was that yeah, the... at Met Stadium? Had okay. a couple at bats and, uh, you know, Yaz I never saw in the minor leagues and Williams, of course, I never saw. That'll do it for this edition of the Sports Show. Thanks for staying up. Thanks for watching us. See you back here next week. Have a good week, everybody.